Welcome to There is a Method to the Madness. My name is Rob Maxwell, and I'm an exercise physiologist and personal trainer. I'm the owner of Maxwell's Fitness Programs, and I've been in business since 1994. The purpose of this podcast is to get to the real deal of what really works, and most importantly, why it works, or why some things don't work. Before I get to today's show, I want to thank our very first and most loyal sponsors, Jonathan and Lynn Gilden of the Gilden Group Realty Pros. They are committed to providing the finest level of customer service and home sales, and they have the sales and the reviews to back that up. So please give them a shout, 386-451-2412. Have you ever seen a bodybuilder running five minute miles in a marathon or have you ever seen a an endurance runner 5k runner 10k runner half marathon marathon whatever you want to use for distance be able to bench press 300 pounds probably not in either case so i've been working with the guy for a while and uh we talk a lot about this subject because you know a lot of times in life we want all things we want to gain muscle and then we want to be able to run well or run well with endurance and uh, naturally you can improve your fitness and do those things but you're not going to be able to run a lot or really at all as far as jogging goes if you really want to Put on muscle. It's just pretty much physiologically impossible. And here is why. To gain muscle is just like gaining fat. Hypertrophy has to happen. So when people gain body fat, they actually get hypertrophy of the fat cells. That's what happens. So when we eat a caloric surplus, meaning we take in more calories than our metabolism can use, and if we take in 500 calories more than our body can use, and we do that for seven consecutive days, we are going to gain one pound that week. I mean, that's just pure science. If you take in a caloric surplus of 1,000 calories a day, you will gain two pounds a week of fat. So, well, I shouldn't say of fat. It depends if you're working out or not. It depends on how you're utilizing that energy. But... Gaining muscle is the same thing. You just can't work out and not have a caloric surplus and think you're going to gain muscle. That is not going to happen. The body needs more energy to create more muscle. Oftentimes people get confused and they think, well, no, I just need to shift the macronutrients from whatever they are to more protein. And that simply isn't true. Your protein needs really do not go up based on what your goals are or what you're doing. I mean, we only need so much protein. We don't need more protein to gain more muscle. We just need enough protein. Now, if we're not consuming enough protein, then we need more protein. But based on statistics, that's not the problem in the American diet. So if you want to gain muscle, you have to take in more calories than your body needs. So if you are doing cardiorespiratory exercise that is burning a lot of calories, which is pretty much what running does. I mean, nothing trumps running as far as a caloric burner. I mean, one study showed cross-country skiing surpasses it but if you live here in the south or really in most places that's not going to be something we're doing every day so we don't really have to consider that swimming burns a lot of calories if you are swimming correctly um, but really nothing trumps running so for example if a 150 pound person runs for 30 minutes let's just say a 10 minute mile or something like that they're gonna burn around 450 calories. That's a lot. If a same size person walks 30 minutes, 
they're gonna burn maybe 150 calories. Now, don't confuse that with what you've heard me say and others say about a mile is a mile. I didn't say miles. If I would have said five miles of walking, five miles of running, then the caloric burn would be essentially the same. But not too many people are walking five miles when they walk because that takes a long time. So you really just can't run and not burn a lot of calories. Now, for somebody that's trying to lose weight, then of course running is an excellent choice, except as you may recall from my book, you can't outrun a poor diet it's still not gonna work if you're overeating. That's just not gonna happen. But if you are eating to lose weight, meaning you're already creating a caloric deficit and you're adding running to that, then of course that's gonna be one of the best ways to drop pounds. There's no question about it. So as you see, if you need to gain muscle or if you want to gain muscle, pretty much the studies show that you need for some reason, we, we like the, the 500 to 1,000 calorie ranges. So if you want to gain muscle, most studies show that you need a caloric surplus of about 500 calories a day from what you normally need. Now you think, man, that's, you know, that's not that hard. Well, it's harder than you think because most people that are thinking about gaining muscle or thinking about losing weight, losing fat, most of the time, they're already pretty conscious about what they're putting into their body. Most of the time, they're pretty conscious about healthy eating. And as I discussed with this person that had this question or we were actually discussing this, it's not that easy to eat a lot of food that's healthy. It's actually challenging to get in an additional 500 calories when you're eating healthy. I mean, if you're eating unhealthy, then of course it's pretty easy to get in those calories, but you know, you are what you eat. So if you're not getting the proper amount of complex carbohydrates and enough lean protein, you're not going to grow. I mean, essentially if you're just taking in a lot of sugar and fat, I mean, that's not the kind of calories that you need to gain the muscle. We need our macronutrients, our quality macronutrients most, mostly complex carbohydrates, high fibrous carbohydrates to gain muscle along with the lean proteins. That's how we're going to gain muscle. And it's just not that easy to get in a lot of food. For example, a serving of non-fat Greek yogurt only has 90 calories in it. That's not a lot of calories. A slice of sourdough bread has 100 calories. A bowl of whole oats, rolled oats, is about 150 calories of a half cup dry. So it's not that easy to get in a lot of food when you're trying to gain muscle because simply healthier foods are lower in caloric density, which is ultimately a good thing. So if it's already a challenge to get in that 500 surplus, so let's say for an average size male, who's pretty active, he's gonna need about 2,600 calories a day just to maintain his body weight, say a 160 pound person. That's gonna be about the caloric level he's gonna to need to maintain his body weight. So now, if he wants to gain muscle, now he's gonna to have to jack that up to about 3,100 calories. That's not as easy as it sounds, as I've already pretty much said over and over. So now throw running on top of that. Now let's say this person goes for a 30 minute run and they're just going at a nice moderate pace, you know, just conversational pace. They're still gonna burn between 400 and 450 calories in that half hour. Well, you just knock that right out. And you know, now you've gotta make up for it with some extra eating that's gonna make it really challenging. So, you know, I've said this before if you look at some of the bodybuilders in the very early days, they probably still do it now. It's just nowadays they're, I don't know, they've gotten so full of the science that they don't really understand themselves. And I can tell just by how they speak and how they talk about it. Not all of them. Some of them, just like every group, you've got your smarter ones and your less smart ones. But 
a lot of them just, um, you know, are, are just really talking about really silly stuff. But if you look at the old timers, I always say that somehow, some way, they instinctively knew what they were doing. They made some mistakes. I mean, they overtrained. They, uh, you know, they did way too many workouts per week and way too many muscle groups and those kind of things. They also were taking steroids, most of them, and most of them have come out and admitted it and have paid the price for that one way or another. So I'm not really knocking them for that. They owned it. And, you know, quite frankly, I don't know the 1970s that they really knew a whole lot about it at that point. And I'm not condoning it. I've never been an advocate for steroids. I don't think it makes any sense at all when you're trying to do this for your health and fitness. They're definitely not going to help your health whatsoever. So they were able to get away with some overtraining that way. But my point to this is that they really knew that about cardiorespiratory exercise. They knew that if they were trying to gain muscle, they had to keep their cardio intensity very, very low. They could not do higher intensity cardio because it simply burns more calories and takes the emphasis off the, of the muscles and you start actually burning into your muscle tissue when you are into a caloric deficit. So what happens is a thing called gluconeogenesis. So when we're low on fuel and now we're at high intensity exercise, we start actually breaking down the protein from the muscles to get the energy that we need and that is called gluconeogenesis. So the weight loss happens like if they're training for a show, but at the same time, a lot of that weight loss becomes muscle and that's the last thing they want. So they knew that, you know, they knew to do their cardio, they walked. They did very low intensity cardio because when you're walking or cycling or using some of the indoor cardiorespiratory training devices at a lower intensity, you're number one, not burning any additional carbohydrates or hardly any carbohydrates. You're mostly burning fat at lower intensities between 50 and 70% roughly of your heart rate max or VO2 max, you're burning mostly fat. You're not really getting into any of the carbohydrate burning, anaerobic burning at all. So you, you kind of get the best of both worlds. Number one, it's more enjoyable. And number two, you're burning more fat. You're not building your VO2 max as much, although you still are getting some cardiac benefits but you're not gonna be able to jump off there and like jump into a 5K and be competitive. I mean, for way more than that reason, plus you probably don't have the genetics for it and you're way too big if you're training for a bodybuilding show. But at the same time, you're not gonna have your cardiovascular system in peak working order, although it will be good. So these guys knew that. I mean, they would do, depending on where they lived, beach walks or some of them just love to be gym rats and they would do easy treadmill walks or they would get on the life cycle, maybe the elliptical, but they would do low intensity cardio because they knew it burned fat and it didn't create that much of a deficit. They could work, walk for 30 minutes and maybe burn 150 to 200 calories, burn some fat and that's all good. So they knew what they were doing. Nowadays, people are trying to get too tricky out there and some of the bodybuilders, I shouldn't even say it's the bodybuilders, it's really more the influencers that are, you know, just basically getting paid by clicks, you know, and, and the more attention seeking they can be, the more clicks they get. And, you know, if you know anything about the social media world and, and the logarithms, you know, advertisers don't care. Clicks are clicks. So, you know, that's why the most outrageous statements online are you know, gonna get the most clicks. They might be completely bogus and that's why it's called clickbait. People click it and that's all the advertisers can see and that's all they care about. So the people that are the most dramatic, the loudest, the meanest, the angriest, you know, those are the uh, types of things that get people to pay attention. And, you know, it's a studied social science now and they found the number one thing that gets clicks is anger. So if you do anything to promote anger, say something that's gonna make somebody angry, you're gonna get clicks. So that's why a lot of them do it, but that's neither here nor there. But in the fitness world, they're gonna say something dramatic like, you've been lied to about this, you've been lied to about that. Instantly, people are going to 
tune in because that's what we tend to do. We just have to retrain ourselves not to fall for that clickbait. But they'll, they get on there and say, you know, for years they were telling you you can't gain muscle and become a great endurance athlete, and that's not true. So they get people that want the best of both worlds to click in, and then they really promote something called HIIT, H-I-I-T, High Intensity Interval Training. And there is a hint of truth to it, but that's the problem. There's only a hint of truth to it, which means that if somebody really kept the duration of their intervals short, very, very intense, and the entire cardio session pretty short, they can get away with, say, sprinting. But they would have to make sure that they keep those qualifications intact. Now, the problem is, you know, if you take any ego out there and say, okay, but you're going to have to keep this to 10 minutes, the ego is going to say more is better, and they're not going to do that. So there is a hint to it. I just wonder, like, why? Like, why feel the need? I mean, why do you have to have the best of both worlds with that when, you know, you can be really fit? I mean, it just really, it just depends on what your goals are. I mean, you know, bodybuilders can run, but they're just not going to be able to get as big as they want to. And endurance runners can absolutely lift and should lift to prevent injuries and for their overall health. But, you know, they're probably not going to be able to outbench the other guys in the gym. And I just keep using bench as the example, but throw in any strength exercise you want. But, like, who cares? I mean, you know, but... but if you're striving one direction or the other, then you have to choose really what you want. It's a lot easier for an endurance athlete to add lifting and not have it impact their performance in the running world for sure. It's a lot harder for somebody trying to gain muscle to try to do endurance exercise at high intensities and not have them impact that. I mean, it's essentially impossible. I mean, I just hate to say it, but, you know, you're just not going to ever see that happening. I mean, it, it is such a, like, energy is so precious. And if you're trying to utilize the energy you have and you're burning it up doing something else, then it's just simply not going to pay off for you. So I'll leave you with this little simple piece of advice. It depends on what your goals are. If you want to gain muscle and that's your primary goal, like your goal is I want to get as big as I can, as muscular as I can. And by the way, that can mean as lean as you can because you absolutely can get lean doing low intensity cardio for sure. You're just not going to be besting your VO2 max. So if that's your goal, then do your typical workouts and keep your low intensity cardio at low intensity. You know, don't do too long either. Just keep it at a moderate duration of 30 to 40 minutes and keep the intensity low. That's simple. If your goal is to not worry about how much muscle you gain and improve your cardio, then it's the opposite. Then your cardiorespiratory workout should be as intense as you can handle, but keep in mind we all can overtrain and it's not smart to run hard every day. You really shouldn't run hard more than two times per week, but you can run hard. Keep your lifting up and just understand that if you're going to lift the week of a race, then you might want to be careful about doing legs a couple days before the event. But that would be the simple advice for you, but really it all comes down to your goals. Now let me thank Overhead Door of Daytona Beach. They are the best garage door company in the state, and we are lucky to have our own here in Daytona Beach. And it's owned by Jeff and Zach Hawk, who I personally vouch for. This place has been here since 1923. You know what? That's a lot longer than I've been in business, so they're doing something right. If you need any help with garage doors, please give them a shout at overheaddoordaytona.com. Please remember to download these episodes and share them on your own social media pages. It really helps me pay the bills.